Hi, my name is Tina Kotesho, and I want you to enter the country of Zamunda. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Tina Carter Show, and I am finally a month later doing the review for Coming to America, the sequel to the 1988 Super Smash Coming to America, starring the legendary Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. Say joy! 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 joy. joy. Can I get a hit? Um, so I want to start out with the positives of this movie. I was so excited to see so many legendary characters come back. James Earl Jones as the King, John Amos as McDowell, um, Lisa McDowell's character. I absolutely loved her in this sequel. Eddie Murphy, of course, as uh, Prince Akeem slash King Akeem, um, Simi, Arsenio Hall. I absolutely love seeing all of them return. I wish the queen could have returned and I wish the sister could have returned, but unfortunately they wasn't in the movie. Um, it was great to see this. It was kind of like a, a where are they now type of thing. So it was great to see um, just all these different characters come back. Originally, this film was supposed to come out Christmas 2020. But due to the pandemic, of course, things got a little shaky. So this movie actually came out um, and was purchased by Amazon Prime Video for over $100 million. So on March 5th, we were finally able to see the long awaited sequel. And like I said, the positives were seeing all the original cast return from the original film to the film now. Um, but positives, I have to shout out Kiki Lane, if I'm pronouncing her name right. She played the oldest daughter of Lisa and of course, Prince Akeem, King Akeem. She was phenomenal. Her fighting skills, her acting skills, her character. <laughs> you would like to solve your problems diplomatically i'm listening her, her wanting to actually take over the throne everything about that and just how i am as far as the feminist movement as people like to uh call me i really liked her character i mean she was fun she was energy she was strong she didn't take no stuff i absolutely loved her so she was a character that i absolutely loved also, Arsenio Hall coming back, he was great. He reprised his role as the Reverend. He also um, played a new role, but I'll get into that new role in my negatives. Um, but he was great. He also continued to play one of the barbers in the barbershop. He was absolutely hilarious. Um, I loved all the cameos in this movie. That was another positive. You had Morgan Freeman, Salt and Pepper, In Vogue, Tiana Taylor. She looked bomb in every scene that she was in. I don't want to say she was a, a cameo, but she was really a positive for this film. If you want me, baby, here I am. As well as Wesley Snipes. His character was amazing every scene that he was in he absolutely stole um he was great he was a great villain um in the end he really wasn't a villain for real for real spoiler alert he had a reason to do what he did quote unquote um but i enjoyed him i also enjoyed a lot of the um different scenes in zamunda because in the original film we really saw it once he came to america um, so this film, we was able to kind of see a little bit more of Zamunda, different fight scenes with Eddie Murphy and his daughters. His actual daughter was in this movie. She played the middle child. Her real name in real life is Bella Murphy. She was great. The young girl, she was also great. So I really enjoyed that. Um, so I have to say, before I get into my negatives, I'm a huge fan of Eddie Murphy, okay? At one point, he was friends with Michael Jackson, and y'all know I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> he said, Eddie, pull it up like I was working for him or something. <laughs> So let's just not even let that go over your head. I abso absolutely love Eddie Murphy. He is a legend, all of that. But to say that, I'm get into my negatives. I'm sorry in advance. Okay, guys. So this is the hard part of any review. You have to get into your negatives. 
as much as I waited on this sequel, as much as I went into this sequel not expecting to see what I saw with the original film, it was still, unfortunately, a lot of negatives that I saw. I felt like there was a lot of uh, missed opportunities in this movie and a lot of unnecessary scenes. So I'll get into it first. It was a couple of scenes with them coming back to America that I thought was a little dry. Um, the lead character, I believe his name was Lavelle. He was the long lost prince. Um, I know it was a lot of pressure on him um, as far as really, because this, this movie is really kind of about him coming into finding himself and everything. Um, I thought that I believe his name is uh, Jermaine Fowler. Um, I think he did the best that he could, but with such a highly anticipated sequel, I was just, I just felt like it was a little lackluster. I didn't really enjoy him as the long lost prince. I didn't really enjoy uh, Leslie, I believe her name is, um, as his mother. I've enjoyed her on Saturday Night Live and in multiple other cameos that she's done. But as far as this film go, I was just like, WDF. <laughs> like, what the heck? Hey, Quang. I'm sorry I slept with your man. What is going on here? It's going on here. And I just I just did not in, enjoy their characters at all. I didn't really enjoy Tracy Morgan in here as the uncle. Like, it was so many different parts. I was like, okay, this could have been cut. This could have been cut. This could have been cut. And it just wasn't cut. It was added into the movie. So it made the movie seem even longer. And then also with this film, I had a really big problem with the music in here. The original movie, it was like, like I felt like it was just more soul in the first movie. I hate to say that, but I just, I, I had a oh, I had a really tough time, even with characters uh, like uh, Rotimi. He's a great actor. He's hilarious uh, on IG. He does like this Mr. Butterscotch, whatever, Nigerian King thing. In this movie, I felt like he was totally lost. I just felt like he was just, oh, we're going to throw Rotimi in here because he's hot. Didn't enjoy it. And I'm a huge Rotimi fan, so no disrespect to him at all you did what you could but once i found out that lavelle's character that dc young fly was up for this part i'm like y'all dropped the ball he would have been physically funny he would have been hilarious i would have believed him more as a long lost african prince but i just i'm sorry and then the whole like um I don't know if Arsenio's Hall character was supposed to be like a leprechaun or a prophet or whatever, but that character was, it was just too much. Oh, you have a long lost son. It was just like, I'm totally like, this is, this is stupid. Why would, why would you do this to the original film? It was almost kind of like all the characters that he played in the original I felt like this new character was totally wasted. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. Also, uh, it was flooded with a lot of cameos. And even though I said that some of the cameos was a positive, some of it was like, it was like Gladys Knight appeared out of nowhere and I was totally confused. It was like Morgan Freeman, okay. It was like Salt and Pepper, okay. It was like In Vogue, okay. But like the placement of Gladys Knight was just really weird to me. Um... And then, like I said, it was so many scenes where they went back to America, like with the lift scene. I know they were trying to be Karen to let you know that we're Karen, blah, blah, blah. But it was just a lot of scenes that I felt like simply could have been cut. Um, like I said, also uh, the music, I just didn't, I didn't feel it. You just, you didn't have a character that I really wanted to hate in this movie. And even the love interest of Lavelle's character, I kind of forgot about her once the movie came out. I know she was supposed to be strong. She was supposed to be the girl he was supposed to be with because he was supposed to be with Tiana Taylor's character. But um, even though she's great and she has potential as an actress, I just felt like in this film, it was completely wasted. I don't, I don't know what to say. I... It's like on one end, you guys, I'm really, really happy that this sequel happened. 
But on another end, I wouldn't have been opposed to it being cooked a little bit longer. Um, I'm honestly, I honestly want to see how Eddie feels about this sequel. Um, Cause I know that this project from the beginning, starting 1988 was his baby. So as a fan of him, I want to know how he kind of feels about this movie. Um, but like I said, I did not go into this film expecting it to be 1988's Coming to America. I expected it to be the new Coming to America. And I still was felt feeling like I'm wear, uh, watching a Where Are They Now special instead of a really good sequel. So um, I hate to kind of be a stinker. <laughs> But um, a lot of you are here because you want to know what my Clapper board review is. Oh, one more thing I want to say that is possible, uh, uh, a positive is Lisa McDowell is still fine. But anyway, um, <laughs> what I'm going to give this film, and y'all know I'm a big Eddie fan. I can't say it enough. But unfortunately, I can only give it three Clapper boards out of five. And really why I got the three out of five is because I was so excited to see this sequel for so long. And I was so excited to see so many characters come back, but it was so many missed opportunities with this sequel. Like I said, Kiki Lane, she was great. I can't wait to see what she does next. Um, Arsenio Hall still has it in my opinion, even though the genie character or whatever that was supposed to be, I absolutely hate it. But, him bringing back the nostalgic characters was great. Eddie Murphy was great, but I just felt like this sequel missed what the original had, and that was so, in my opinion. So, unfortunately, guys, I'm gonna have to give it three clapper boards out of five. But like I said, I'ma still say this. If you haven't seen it already, I recommend that you stream it on Amazon Prime, get a Tina Carter Show ticket, and tell me what you think about the sequel to the 1988 Coming to America. And tell me what you think about Coming to America in the comments below. Like I always say, guys, believe, create, and inspire. This is the Tina Carter Show.